Hello everybody and welcome back. So, since the last video I did on the Vista 20P security system, I have added a few new things to it. So first off, I'm going to start off by introducing the new keypad that I installed. I mean, I know what you're thinking right now, this looks like the exact same keypad as the one in the previous video. But, this is actually a different model. This is actually a 6160 RF keypad. So, it has an RF transceiver built into the keypad for use of wireless zones. And there are also some other noticeable differences about the keypad as well. Maybe not visually, but for example, hitting a button. You see, it, it sounds a little different there, doesn't it? It's like a slightly higher pitched beep, and the beeps, I don't know, they sound a little bit more compressed, I guess. Um. And actually, believe it or not, that, you know, the, um, beeper in the keypad actually packs a little bit more of a punch than the old one did. It's just a much deeper beep, I guess is what I'm saying here. Anyhow. <laughs> well, first we have to let the alarm process clear itself up. Alright, so now that the keypad is out of the way, I also want to introduce a couple of uh, other devices in which have been added to the system. So we're gonna go down here now. So to start off, this, this is a Honeywell, um, I forgot the exact model, let me actually go find that real fast. So I finally found a box for it, this is the box for it right here. It's a Honeywell 5816 uh, wireless door slash window contact, and it's ad advertised to be a high security wireless product as well. So, I mean, there's not really much to explain about it. I mean, it's wireless, so obviously meaning instead of hardwired, it operates wirelessly and with battery power instead. So, just a quick demonstration here. And yep, you see now the system is faulted. And we're gonna put the magnet back. And there we go. Now the second thing, oops. Yeah, now the other thing I wanted to demonstrate that I got, let me actually get the box for it first. Yep, a Honeywell 5834. It's a key fob remote that can wirelessly operate the security system. So here it is right here. Just looks like a, kind of like a car key fob, doesn't it? But yeah, has different functionalities on it, like arming, oops, focus, arming right here, disarm, arm stay, and then that's actually a medical panic right there. So, let's, let me just do a brief demonstration real fast. Focus. Right here. Focus right here. Come on. There we go. There we go. Now we just uh, made it arm to away using the remote. Now we're gonna disarm it. When I get it to focus. And there we go. So, I mean, that's basically all there is to say about this remote. It's just like a wireless remote to control the security system. So now this video is going to be taking a slightly different turn. Now I'm going to be introducing something else. So this, this is a Flipper Zero. So in case you don't know what a Flipper Zero is, it's essentially a toy-like multi-tool device that's also capable of doing some small hacking as well. And it's available to the general public as of right now to buy. So, I mean, no, it, like, when I say small hacking, it cannot 
hack the most secure things out there, no, but uh, small things. So, I mean, for example, uh, like, it can mess with sub-gigahertz signals, like intercepting them and playing them back. Um, it can mess with RFID, NFC, and so on and so forth. This is running the Unleashed firmware version, just by the way. So, I'm not going to go too in-depth into its features and whatnot because this video is not intended to be a product review video of the Flipper Zero. But the reason I introduced it is because what if I told you that actually something like this is actually capable of compromising the Honeywell wireless devices in which I introduced you guys earlier. So, more to come on that. So after doing some research online, including even on the FCC website, it appears that these Honeywell wireless devices uh, operate at around 345 megahertz. So why do I bring that up? Well, if we go back to the flipper here and go to the, the sub gigahertz application, read raw and config, this thing is actually capable of tuning to that frequency of 345 megahertz. So when I just went to the read raw section there, once I back out of this, um, essentially once I hit the record button right here, it's gonna start listening over that frequency and any transmission that comes over that frequency is gonna pop up in the spectrum here. So, for example, I'm gonna zoom into the wireless door sensor here. I'm gonna hold the flipper close to it and I'm gonna hit record and separate that magnet. And yeah, you see that? We just intercepted uh, a transmission from the wireless door contact. So, and the thing is, after you intercept a signal like this on the read raw op option there, after you're done recording, then you can push a button to send that same signal that you just intercepted, play it back over that same frequency and everything. Um, so for example, I'm actually gonna erase that one, and then I'm gonna hit record again and then close it. So, yeah, I just intercepted now the signal for um, closing. So I can mimic this signal over that frequency and essentially um, make the keypad think that it is now closed. I mean, granted though, this is not a very clean recording, so I'm gonna have to get a more clean recording. So stand by, I'll be right back. I might even have to take the sensor apart and put the flipper right up to its antenna to get a clean recording of it. Because granted, the radio antenna inside the flipper is not the strongest thing out there. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'll be right back once I get a clean recording here. Alright, so I'm back and I got a cleaner recording of the closing uh, transmission signal from that uh, wireless magnet there. So, looking down here, yeah, it's currently still open and apart, and last time it transmitted to the RF receiver that it's open. But watch this. So, yeah, I have a, a cleaner recording of the closing signal. So watch this when once I transmit that over the same frequency. Oh, and look at that. It is now ready to arm. It thinks it's closed now. So, I'm also going to transmit another signal again, just um, an opening signal, and try to keep this more in focus this time. Come on.
Yep, now you see it's faulted again. And one last time. Um, oop. Well, forgot to put it in view of the camera. But you heard it there. And now, yeah, now it thinks it's closed again and it's ready to arm. So you thought it was over with just that wireless door contact? Nope. The same exact vulnerability also exists with these key fobs as well. So just like last time, yeah, we're going to intercept a signal that it transmits with the sub gigahertz application on the flipper, and we're going to play it back on that frequency. So, yeah, we're back at the flipper here. We're going to go into the sub gigahertz, read raw, and yep, the key fobs also operate at the same frequency and everything, 345 megahertz. So, what I'm going to do here, well, we're going to zoom in. So, yeah, you know, I'm going to record on my flipper and then push a button on the key fob remote and intercept a signal it transmits. And yep. You see, we just intercepted that signal there. And now, we're gonna try to just play back that same transmission we just intercepted there. First, I'm gonna arm it to something. So, let's put it on stay, for example. So you don't have to listen to that beeping countdown if it's on away mode. Come on, focus. Thank you. All right, so I'll be back when that delay expires. All right, so now the delay has expired, so now we're gonna attempt to play back the same signal that we just intercepted there and see if we can disarm it since I transmitted the disarm signal over that frequency. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Let me... Ah! See, yep. Finally got it to go. I mean, it took multiple tries and multiple different angles, but we were able to finally get to disarm based off of the same signal that we intercepted using the flipper zero there. So now the conclusion, I mean, why did I make this video? Well, essentially I'm here to tell you that uh, you should not trust Honeywell wireless security products, um, including the ones shown here. I'm pretty sure these products are even advertised as the quote unquote high security wireless product line. Well, what did I just show you earlier? Obviously, not that high of security. So, and also, why did I show using the Flipper Zero to compromise these things? Well, honestly, just thinking about it a little bit, if something like this is, you know, just now available to the general public, imagine the type of technology that's been out there not available to the general public that's probably been able to do the same things and might have been even more powerful than this they might have, they might have just kind of you know nerfed these things for the general public a bit such as the radio chip like i showed earlier um and especially now that there is something like this out there uh in the market like the flipper zero um yeah, imagine now how um, more advanced um, other pieces of technology are that are not available to the public that maybe, you know, bad people are using. And, again, like, that technology is probably a lot more powerful than the Flipper Zero. It can do at least the same things, if not more, and more transmitting power, more jamming power, so on and so forth. So, essentially, um, 
with the way technology is looking right now, uh, don't use uh, Honeywell's wireless security products. If you're using Honeywell security, uh, go hardwired only. I mean, personally, I'd recommend hardwired for any security system, regardless of brand. But I mean, evidently, maybe some other wireless security products might be better than others, but I have no idea. Um, so anyway, that's going to do it for this video. I hope this was informative to you. Um, so thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching and uh, hope to see you in the next one.